Hello, God bless you. Hope you're doing well. Hope your day is off to a good start or going well or has been a great one, whether it's morning, noon, or night as you watch this. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship. We're a church located in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion is where we read a chapter from the Bible together. We post these videos uh, five days a week. And uh, you can access them, of course, at any time. These are just meant to be a tool to uh, help people include a little bit of God's Word in their day, in their routine. At present, we are reading together the Gospel of Luke, a chapter at a time. And today we read chapter 18. Uh, Chapter 18 has 43 verses and a number of sections. Uh, One of those is a parable of the persistent widow. Another is a parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. We'll see Jesus bless children. Uh, There'll be uh, a story about a rich man. And then Jesus heals a blind beggar. All that happening in Luke chapter 18. So let's begin. Verse 1 says, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. Don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I'm not a sinner like everyone else. For I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not that like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. One day, some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But when the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents for bothering him. And then Jesus called to the little children and said to the disciples, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Once a religious leader asked this question of Jesus, Good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother. And the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard his answer, he said, there's still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and then come follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw this, he said, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, then who in the world can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. And Peter said, we left our homes to follow you. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wife or brother or parents or children for the sake of this kingdom of God will be repaid many times over in this life and will have eternal life. 
in the world to come. Taking the 12 disciples aside, Jesus said, listen, we're going up to Jerusalem where all the predictions of the prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He'll be handed over to the Romans and he'll be mocked, treated shamefully and spit upon. They'll flog him with a whip and kill him. But on the third day, he'll rise again. They didn't understand any of this. The significance of his words was hidden from them, and they failed to grasp what he was talking about. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road, and when he heard the noise of the crowd going past, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was going by, and so he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, the people in front yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. As the man came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, All right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus, praising God. And all who saw it praised God too. See into Luke chapter 18. A lot of great content here, and uh, honestly, I think most of it just speaks for itself. Um, We can draw such encouragement from the life and the ministry, the example of Jesus. And that's why we've started this daily devotion series with the Gospels. I mean, of course, you know, if we, we happen to start with the New Testament, the Gospels do come at the beginning of the New Testament. So chronologically, um, that just makes sense also. But it's more than that. It's, it's, you know, we as disciples, as Christians, we follow Jesus. And if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to start with his example. We need to start by, well, following Jesus. And so that's what we're doing. I hope you've been blessed by this chapter from the Gospel of Luke, and uh, I hope you'll join us again for um, the very next chapter, Luke chapter 19. God bless you.